The following podcast may contain language and subject matter not suitable for all ages or everyone. If you don't like what you're listening to, please press stop. Looking for a great night out? Then come on down to BK House. Great music, great food, and great drink specials. It's always a fun time, and there's always a great crowd. We're open late and serve food until closing time. Outdoor patios, darts, and so much more. This is our house, BK House, located in downtown Changwon. Follow us on Facebook at BK House Bar. O'Brien's Irish Bar in Changwon City, South Korea. The original and only Irish pub in the Changwon area. Great food, drinks, atmosphere, music, and people. Nightly specials on both food and drinks. Craft beer on tap and over 12 different craft beers in the fridge. Also check out our mini mart at OB's for great deals on things that you may miss from back home, including our all new deli meat. Follow us on Facebook or better yet, come on down and check us out for yourself. O'Brien's Irish Bar, located in downtown Changwon, across from the International Hotel. Come on down and have yourself a pint. You're 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 tuned in to the Changwoner, the social media podcast for Changwon City, South Korea, with your host Scott. D and Paul. Welcome to another episode of the Chang Water Podcast. Once again, I'm Scott, and with me is Paul. Paul, how's it going? It's going very good, thank you. And today we got a special guest. We have Hyun Min Choi. Hyun Min Choi. Hyun Min Choi. Yeah. Also Min-che. known as Matt. Matt from Biscacci. How's it going, Matt? I'm um, good. How's it going? Good, man. Yeah, it's a long holiday. Yeah, right? You guys keep staying in the town? Yeah, or? yeah right. Why don't you travel like somewhere? Nah, nah, sticking around, mate. Work, working too hard. Whoa, a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. What about you? you have a uh, few? Just, just working, working. Yeah. Nothing, nothing special, just <laughs> drinking, working. <laughs> drinking, working, and... Yeah. Just for the record, getting beaten at beer pong. Ah, fuck. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, you guys are always work, drink, work, drink, right? It's a hard life, isn't it? Eh? But I do drink, 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 <laughs> because my job includes drinking. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I know it's hard, isn't it? You yeah. Know? So hard. just before we get started, let's do our ceremonial oh, yeah. cheers. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Cheers, guys. And we have a word for the podcast. What is that? I don't know. What is it, Paul? Uh, I'll, oof, let's have a look. Can't even read it. It's a uh, flummox. And flummox, it's a, yes. It's a verb. So to flummox, which means to bewilder or confound or confuse somebody. Have you ever flummoxed somebody, Scott? I think I flummox people all the time. I flummox myself every day. I so have no idea what's going on. If somebody uses that word during the podcast, the other two people drink. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you don't have to worry about it too much. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so Matt, uh-huh. where are you from in Korea? Uh, I'm from Seoul. I born in Seoul, grew up in Seoul, and I spent all my life from Seoul. Mm-hmm. And, but I moved to Changwon about four or five years ago. Right. Yeah. Well, why did you move down here? Uh, my company sent me to this city. So before I come Changwon, uh-huh. I didn't even know where Changwon was. Really? So yeah, I, I hated to move to this city. So yeah, I right. even thinking to quit my job. But, uh-huh. Uh-huh. but people keep saying to me, oh, it's a nice city to live. So right. Okay, then let's see. So what's what did, going on? What did you think when you I came? I love now? this place. I yeah. love this place. Why do you love it so much? I don't know. Everything like uh, people and the environment. Like for example, whenever I'm living in Seoul, mm-hmm. like. It's just city life, citizens' life. But Changwon, oh yeah, I want to go beach, and I can have a brunch in Gwangali. Mm. I would see a great ocean. So, yeah, right. It's pretty green as well, you know. It's true. Yeah. Sun, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, and no crowded. Right. Yeah. right. So, but you must have enjoyed living in Seoul, right? Ah, yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. What What are the good things for you about that? Itaewon. <laughs> <laughs> drink, drink, drink. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but there's enough of that going on here as well. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Asia doesn't have a nice club, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Actually, well, there are like some Korean ones, right? But not like foreign stuff. Yeah, yeah I prefer like to go foreigners, place. Yeah, but your your place is is pretty pumping a lot. You know I, what I mean? That, that's one it, one of the reasons I opened my place. <laughs> yeah, to make it like a bar club sort of yeah, thing, right? Yeah. yeah, it was good. I was in there the other night and. Uh, we had Alex Walsh. You had Alex Walsh uh, DJing, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was yeah. a spur of the moment thing, but uh-huh. it was cool, right? Uh-huh. So, uh, w- where and how did you learn your English? Uh, I was I was studying English from Canada. I was there about eight months, and I I, I even met James from there. We always hang out together uh, with a lot of foreign friend, Latin friend, mostly Latin friend. Yeah, you and guys were in Vancouver, right? Yeah, yeah. It was two thousand eight, nine, something like this. So, what you what did you think about Vancouver? Oh, uh, it's my still this city stays my dream city i still have a plan to like move vancouver my goal is like sending my boy school from canada oh so, cool, cool. Uh, maybe five six years later do you remember uh, whereabouts in vancouver you lived uh i used to live in north vancouver but i always miss my last bus so i decided to move into downtown <laughs> and my life become just drinking once i moved to <laughs> downtown yeah i see you drinking i've never been over there you know why is it why is it so cool I, I don't know. Like uh, they have a great, ma- they have a, a big city, mm. mountain, and mm. ocean all stay together. Mm. So I can and enjoy. The weather is pretty consistent all year round. Well, like sunny? Uh, during summer, it's amazing, but it's not uh, that cold in the winter compared to the rest of Canada. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So hang on, I, I thought Vancouver was where you went to do a lot of snowboarding and stuff like that. Um, BC Whistler, Whistler, Whistler is in I've BC. I've been there once. Vancouver is uh, an island that's part of BC. Ah, okay, okay. So, right. so you were there for eight months. Yeah, eight months. And you studied English, and, and then you, man, you made me feel bad. I've been here for years, <laughs> and my Korean's still not that good. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just uh, but even after coming back from Vancouver, I regularly hang out foreigner here, in Korea. Right. I think this gave me a lot of opportunity to like keep improving my English. Right. Right. Well, I mean, uh, you hang out with foreigners every day, yeah, pretty much in yeah. the bar, right? Sometimes I speak even more English than Korean. Yeah. Like I speak English home. I speak English yeah. bar. Yeah. Right. And especially today, I didn't even speak one Korean word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, I just the only one Korean that I speak was when I'm ordering McDonald's. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you've had a McDonald's yeah. today. <laughs> that was breakfast. Uh. <laughs> All right. So, um, aside from Canada and Korea, obviously, where else have you been? Uh, excuse me. Where other, which other countries have you been to? Uh, I was living in the Boston about a year and six months, but I was too young. I was with family there. My father was working in Boston, so I. Uh, was in the elementary school in the Boston, oh, but really? I don't think this influenced me on my English. Anything I don't even have any memory there. Really, I was too young, like seven years old, eight years old. Oh, okay, that, that's all where I live. Right, yeah. right, right. Still quite a long time to be over there. Right? Yeah, you know what I mean. So mm. just the states, Canada, yeah. Korea, yeah, the three. Yeah, and you obviously prefer. Canada. Canada, yeah, no gun, <laughs> no guns, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, and more party. <laughs> so you mentioned before that you've got your little a little boy, right? Oh yeah, right, yeah. Right. How's that going? Oh, it's cool. It's kind of nice to feel my boy keep giving me uh, attention and like depended on me and right. Uh, uh, it's hard to explain the father's feeling. I cannot even describe this feeling. It's like it's undescribable. I don't know. Right. right. Yeah, even Korean, I cannot explain this feeling. Uh-huh. So every day is kind of uh, ah, like I have a baby and then feel it. Yeah, right. No, 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 not just yet. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Try next year. <laughs> next year. Oh, yeah. Whoa, <laughs> so you're uh, you're obviously married. Uh huh. Where's your wife from? Uh, she's from Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. So did you guys meet in Brazil or? Yeah, I met them. I met her from Brazil because when I was studying English in Canada, I had a lot of Brazilian friends and I was visiting them. I already visited there four times, and uh, when I second time to visit there, uh, one of my friends from Brazil like introduced her to me, and we started dating. Something mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. How's your Portuguese? Uh, <laughs> I thought I I'm kind of language genius. I thought, but no, not at all. I studied Portuguese over three years, but no, I don't even have any grammar base. But you try. I'm trying. I'm keep trying. You yeah. keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> does, she, does she teach you some stuff sometimes or uh, we always did language exchange I teach her Korean and she teach me uh, Portuguese okay but, uh, I'm not a good teacher uh, yeah, I'm not a good teacher maybe she's not a good teacher as well how's her uh, Korean coming on 
Her Korean what? Her Korean. How's her Korean language going? Uh, <laughs> blame me. I don't. T- I, I'm not diligent enough to teach her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know, you, you're basically doing a bar, right? So you don't have a lot of time to be, become a teacher. Or something yeah, that's like that, right. right? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, let's talk about that. You run a bar, right? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, and it is called uh huh. Biscacci. Biscacci. Right. And where is Biscacci? Uh, it's located uh Olympic Hotel. Okay. Yeah, and second floor. Uh, okay. And, yeah, we don't even have a signboard, so it's kind of hidden place. Right. People cannot even find it. Yeah. We call that a hidden gem. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. And it is a hidden gem, right? Uh, here, yeah. big house as well. Yeah. Is of course. It? No? Yeah. They all are, you know. Yeah. All the bars are great. You know, there's a great crowd all the time, right? It's awesome, isn't it? All right. So before we get into what you do here and about your bar, let's get into some birthdays and shout outs for this coming week. It's time for your birthday wishes, shout outs and announcements on the Chang Warner podcast. All right. So this coming week, I believe it's Austin Buckley's birthday, possibly on October 10th. I'm not 100 percent sure, but from the past, I remember it being his birthday. So. If it is, happy birthday, Austin. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. And who else do we have? Well, I think we just had Juhi's birthday, so I hope she had a good time. Happy birthday, Juhi. And what uh, about you, Matt? Uh, and also, uh, next Monday, about yeah. two days later, uh, it's Robbie, the South African Robbie's birthday. So happy birthday, Robbie. Have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'd like to give a shout out to D, who's back home, and also uh, Ji and his wife. Yeah, guys. We're back in the States. We hope you're both having a great time. Yeah, we'll miss you guys. And I guess you'll be back sooner than later. Yeah, right. Have a great time, guys. All right. So before we start the birthdays and shout outs, we started getting into about Matt running a bar. So your bar's name is what? Biscacci. Biscacci. It's What's Portuguese. The, yeah, what is the deal with that? Uh, it means like bitch. <laughs> it means beach. It's true. It's be, beach bar. Yeah, beach bar. That's <laughs> Where are we at? I'm at the beach now. <laughs> Why did you choose that? Uh, actually, it's a great name, isn't it? Right. So hang on. Uh, beach or bitch? Bitch. Okay. Beach. Son of a bitch. Oh, okay. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Bitch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's catchy. Yeah. It's so a bit I, catchy. Yeah. I asked my wife, like, what name could be cool for my bar? And she gave me some of options, like, yeah. like, uh, one was a biscuit and another one was something safado and another was just graffiti bar like because we have a lot of graffiti ah, art bar. yeah I remember when bar, you were so. like asking yeah. me oh we might yeah. call it graffiti bar I even asked you how to spell biscuit in English right oh yeah. that's right to make right. the right. English pronunciation did, did I get it right <laughs> I think I think that's <laughs> wrong <laughs> you think it's I don't wrong know. Oh. I don't know actually you gave me the the way to write it yeah because in Portuguese I need to write B-I-S-C-A-T-E right right but to make the English sounds yeah. biscuits. I yeah, I, I think it reads about right, doesn't it, Scott? Uh, yeah, it can be a little bit of a flumax. Flumax? Hang on a sec. <laughs> I thought it was a flummox. Flummox, that's what I said. <laughs> <no>? <laughs> that doesn't count. Nobody's drinking. I'll drink. <laughs> yeah, you should drink. <laughs> I try to lose as much as possible. So, <laughs> so how long you been open, dude? Uh, so far, two years and six months. Yeah? Yeah. How's it going? Is it going good? Oh, so... Uh, it it's is. nice. It's nice. I was able to meet a lot of like nice people and yeah. drunk people. Yeah. And, yeah. I had a great, great time always. Right. Right. Yeah. So two years and six months. Mm. And before that, one more time, what was your job? Uh, I was working for the one pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company as a medical representative. Okay. It was a British company. Probably you know Paul. You're from yeah. England. Uh-huh. Do you know uh-huh. uh, GlaxoSmithKline? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's yeah. a good company. It right? was nice. It was nice. But I was not happy there. Right. So but why not? I don't know. Uh, like, I dislike that job. Just, I was not that type of person. Like, yeah. cannot be happy in the company, in the, yeah, like, yeah. A work as a team or this kind of stuff. Maybe I'm not a type of person. So you wanted your own business, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what made you decide to open up a bar? Uh, you, I told you guys, like, I'm not from this city. So when I firstly came down Changwon to work, I was always lonely and I needed some place to go alone me myself without any friend uh but i don't have so i always go so every single weekend but one day i decided why not i open my own place like uh, for a people who need some place even they can come by themselves mm-hmm. yeah this right. kind of reason and also i was a to be honest i was a big fan of o'brien 
Right. And, you know, Paul, I met you from there. I maybe, know, yeah. Four, like we met years ago. That's right. We met quite a while before yeah. um, O'Brien's. Was, is somebody on the hotline or what? <laughs> what is that? We have to apologize. There's somebody calling a phone here, but apparently there's actually no phone. <laughs> It'll go off in a minute anyway. Just ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we met we met a few years before that, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so yeah. I always hanging out, like, I always had a group of foreign friends right, that I right. regularly hanging out and yeah. wanted to make some place for them. And that is a good catch. Yeah, right? Yeah. So I guess you got too many friends now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Most of like a friends that I met before Biscuits left Korea. Polly Robbie probably is the only one that I know. Mike Valley. Polly Mike Robbie. Valley. Yeah, yeah, right. And yeah. Uh, you know, Matt Barber's coming back. You know I know, that, yeah, right? yeah. End of October. Sweet. Like Yeah, November, yeah, yeah. Coming, coming soon, like, right? Yeah. Oh, strike. I cannot wait. Like yeah, he was the one who always like supported my place when I built the place. That's always right. like give me a lot of advice and Right. Yeah. Right, right. So anyway, getting back to that, you decided to open Biscacci. And you know, what was the concept like? You know, there's a few foreign bars around town. Did you have any idea, you know, that you wanted to make the bar that you've got today, or, or did it kind of, you know, slowly change? Into like the like, style. Uh, the style. At yeah. the beginning, to be honest, we wanted to make restaurant, right? Some foreign restaurant. Do you remember we yeah. went once in Tegu, uh, Holy Grill called the Holy yeah, Grill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah. to make the restaurant called Holy Grill, like that, something like this in Changwon. Right. But uh, we gave up. Like, let's make it more funner place. Right. And design piece clash. Yeah. It's yeah. a, I wanted to make some very messy place. And uh-huh. then I don't need to always take care of the cleanest, this mm-hmm. kind of thing. Just messy. Like people can drink and show their primary instincts. And right. Yeah. And that's definitely what people do. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. Well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's going on in the bar? What have you got in there? So what kind of things do you have? Like, uh, I, I know you've got like electronic pong, darts, darts and, and video game. And I used to have shuffleboard, but no one plays it. So I sell it and. I used to have also a football table, but it was destroyed after six months. Really? Yeah, people play too hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just throw it out. and yeah. yeah, we have a music, we have a beer, we have a whiskey. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Good drinks. <laughs> yeah. And beer pong. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you want to against me next time? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> Actually, this guy, his beer pong skills are uh, unorthodox. Yeah, I've in, seen him do yeah. bank shots off the wall. And <laughs> yeah, right. Stuff like that. I would go as far as saying that he flummoxes me when he plays beer mm. pong. Drink. Hurry up. Oh, wait a minute. Matt's drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> so anyway, um, when you opened the bar, you know, did you find it difficult at first? Oh, at the beginning, it was always difficult because... Like the location, location, it, it's not even visible. So no one come at the beginning. So like maybe three day direct, we didn't have even one people. So, right. Yeah. At the beginning, I had a lot of difficulties to let people know my place. So. Right. Because of the location or I think just lo- getting the name out? Uh, I think, I think location is one of the reason. And also me and James never give any kind of fryer. So. And the are flyers. Yeah. Never, ever. Right. Like, I, I wanted to like <coughs> control the population like i don't want to get too much random people what do you just target like foreigner foreign market so right uh, yeah yeah so you you know too many random people i guess it can sort of lead to some kinds yeah. of trouble uh, this kind well. of ruined the atmosphere i believe right so that's why we never give any fryer right right yeah. so i know i know you guys are open late uh-huh. usually anyway that's like kind of a last place people go to yeah that's right it's the what time stuff. do you guys open we open at nine. Nine, and if you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What time do you close? <laughs> uh, I think I think uh, seven a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Usually six or seven a.m. in the morning. But weekday we close earlier, maybe three, four. Okay. Yeah. So the sun's not always up. Every day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Do you, Do you feel you know? Does it feel a little bit like unhealthy? You know, going home at that time or starting work late or can you deal? with it easily uh, I, I, I think I and James are still young so we yeah. can still so far handling well but I don't know if we can keep this long I will die early if I keep this like over 10 years 20 years I will die early maybe right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how have you found mixing like family life with running a bar uh, it's like since you became a dad is it difficult it's very much complicated to say you this because like I'm kind of living in the middle of party every single weekend. 
mm-hmm. but at the home I'm at the same time I'm a father mm-hmm. and a husband so uh, I always have a kind of big argument with my wife with it like mm-hmm. she basically like unhappy with like uh, my party life mm-hmm. so I'm always explain oh, yeah, this is my work and Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I have to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah fair enough. So, mm-hmm. what time? What time does your son usually wake up? Uh, he wake up seven a.m. in the morning, between seven and eight, which means right after I come back home. So, right. Yeah. So I always, before go bed, I play some with him. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you go to bed, and yeah. so it's difficult getting sleep here and there, though. Ah, uh, because sometimes. he always cry. I sleep in the room, but he keep crying. I listened and couldn't keep sleeping, so I never ever sleep over four or five hour every day. Never sleep over four hour, five hour. So before, uh, before I gave a birth, people who has a baby always ask me, "Sleep now, sleep, sleep long." Right. Yeah, but I never understood why they saying this. But uh-huh. now I can clearly see why. Right. So I, I would like to say you too. One day you guys will be a father, right? Maybe. Just sleep enough. How uh, how old is your son now? It's almost uh, one year old. One year. It just old? became one year old. Yeah, end of September two thousand fourteen, he was mm. born in. So. What's his name? It's Davi Jiang. It's complicated, Davi. right? Davi is a Latin name, Brazil, very common Brazil name. And Jiang is a Korean name. I wanted to put name Martin, Martin. at the beginning. Yeah, it's a good name to me. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So who yeah. chose the name? Was that both of you together or? Both together. Like, yeah. like Davi is a name that I can perfectly pronounce in English, mm-hmm. in Portuguese, mm-hmm. and in Korean. Right. And Jiang as well. Jiang. So it was mm-hmm. very hard to pick up name when we decided for sure. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so over the last couple of years, you must have seen some crazy things going on in the bar. I think uh, James is the biggest crazy <laughs> problem <laughs> always. <laughs> James we've had on the show before. Yeah, yeah man. James, James yeah. is yeah. always the biggest like problem. Yeah. Yeah, right. So yeah. yeah, actually going back there, how did you guys meet? I told you I met him from Canada. Oh, yeah. oh it was we started in, together. Oh, you actually met there. Yeah, yeah, you didn't go together. No, no, I met ah. them from there. Yeah, was yeah. he from Changwon? No, he's from Pohang. Pohang, right, which is two hour distance by car from Changwon. Yeah. So, um, so po- when you moved from Seoul to mm-hmm. Changwon, was James in Pohang? No, James was time? living in Seoul. He's he in Seoul. Yeah. Okay. But every single weekend he come Changwon. I, I say, I say, James. Hey, James, I find us some cool place. Let's go. So yeah. every single weekend he come and we go BK, we go Brian, yeah. we go Newcastle. Yeah. And he started like it and I invited him to have a business together. Yeah. So Yeah. And you guys have been running it ever since and <laughs> <laughs> who drinks the most? I, I don't know. I believe I drink more, but why always he's drunk? I know. <laughs> I, right? I believe I drink more, most of the things. But, uh. Yeah, he has a good time, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's it's important too because obviously he's around, you know talking to all the customers too and like having a good time and you too right that's yeah. good right you know, right right no matter what it's good people yeah. go there not only to drink but they go to see you guys right, right that's and hang right out, yeah you know just like buddies <laughs> <laughs> all right so before we get into some crazy stories from biscacci over the last couple of years let's find out what's going on in Changwon this coming week bang <laughs> Get your local events list for Changwon City. Get your ass out the chair, and we'll see you there. All right, this coming week at O'Brien's, they've got Taco Tuesdays, which is probably tonight if you're listening to this podcast. They have uh, great tacos and nachos and other things like that. They have the deli meats, which you can order today or Wednesday or possibly even Thursday and he cuts the meats on Thursday and you can pick them up starting Thursday night plus a bunch of other stuff at the mini mart at O'Brien's like cheese and other things and this coming weekend they've got their 12th anniversary which is October 17th they're having a brunch which starts at noon with some uh, great menu items like breakfast things I believe there's five or six spots still open for that. So uh, if you want to check that out, get on Facebook on O'Brien's and uh, get yourself a seat. And they'll also have a pool tournament that night starting at 6 p.m. And happy hours from 10 to 11 p.m. So it'll be a busy night at O'Brien's for their 12th anniversary. Always a big night, eh? Yeah. 
Yeah. 12 years already. Man, long time, eh? Awesome. And uh, what's going on at BK House? All right, BK House. Uh, well, we've got the Rugby World Cup. It's all hotting up, but unfortunately, England are out, which I'm pretty good at about. But uh, I guess some people would say there's no surprises there. She's got the uh, Rugby World Cup on the big screens. That's one inside and one outside. And uh, she's also got food specials all week. And she'll have Tigers on special for 4000 How's about uh, Biscacci, Matt? Uh, coming Friday, uh, Robbie and I has a birthday party together. So I didn't decide the detailed plan yet, but uh, probably we're going to have a dinner out. Maybe if I can find some rooftop available, I want to do a rooftop grill. Sweet. And then go bar and party drinking. Big party. Yeah. So I, I wish my hangover doesn't go long next day. <laughs> it will. Uh, I, I wish not, yeah. <laughs> There'll be lots of shots going on, right? The yeah. agua. The, when I had a 30 years old, my birthday party two yeah. years ago, I finished, I finished 30 shots, over 30 shots. Oh like I finished word. over 30 tequila shots. And whenever people ask me cheers, they drink Red Bull shot and I drink tequila shot. But I didn't know that. So oh, next dear. day when I woke up, I woke up in the middle of vomit. Oh, <laughs> and my, my, the water tap was destroyed and cat mm-hmm. litter box was destroyed. So everything was destroyed when I wake up. So I wish it did not happen again. It will. It's, it's going to ah, be no, a big place. Night. No, you know no. It is. Yeah. <laughs> and over at IP, they always have their, uh, the rugby on too on the big screen and they'll also have some food and drink specials, I'm sure, including biltong, which you can get there, mm-hmm. which is a South African beef jerky. Yeah, right. And on the Sunday, which is the 18th, the uh, Busan Foreign Culture Market is on. Oh, right. So that's from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., and that's in uh, Busan around the bars in Guanali. And there's always, you know, great food from all around the world there and other things other that products. you can pick up. And a lot of it, pretty much all of it, I think, is towards charity. Yeah, they've got three charities, I believe. One is a woman's shelter. Uh, one is BAPS, which is for the dogs. And uh, I can't quite remember the third one, but there's three charities that they usually right. uh, donate to. And I'm sure uh, Ian will be there with his uh, Ian with the cheesecakes. Oh, yeah. Those so you can grab some cheesecake while you're there, if anything. Delicious. And also on Sunday... The 18th, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., the new Taj Mahal will be having a free buffet. Sorry, to promote come free? Free, yeah. Whoa. To promote their uh, grand opening. Wow. That's awesome. So, to find out more about that, you can uh, just get on, you can get on Facebook, and I'll post a link, and you have to uh, book your spot for it so they know how many people are coming. I'd get in there early because obviously it's free, so I'd say there'd be quite a few people. <laughs> and that's on the uh, second floor of oh, the same building O'Brien's is in. Right. All right, so before we start what's going on in Changwon, we're going to ask you, what are some crazy stories that you've had over the last two years in, at Biscacci? Ah, the crazy story. Well, uh... It's got to be a few. Uh, there are a lot, maybe too much, so I need to like pick up what... I remember James said a couple. What did he say? I don't remember. I, I listened to... I believe it was something to do with finding a bra. Ah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Even people left bra, condom. <laughs> oh how do I say the t- Tampon. Oh, okay, Even really? people dropped tampon and uh, yes. every, every kind of thing. That, like a, some starking, the woman starking yeah. and... That kind of thing is most of memorable things. So people even ask me, like, Do, did you find my bra at the bar? <laughs> uh, yeah, why, actually, why did you leave bra at the bar? <laughs> Don't be naked here. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing is always, like, a memorable. Like, I, I told you my, when I designed my place, like, I wanted to, like, uh, make people show their own primal instincts. So mm-hmm. I, I can say, like, people have an animal part right. deep inside. Yeah. So once they drink enough, they show it. Oh. Yeah. The yeah. animal comes out. Yeah, animal comes out. Beast, <laughs> beast comes out. Yeah, right. well, I, I, I'd say for me, I just just leave my wallet, and keys, and cards, and that's what I do. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> I, I, I think a couple of times I like I pick up your stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you must get a lot of lost property. Ah, like, true, things true. left there, right? Yeah. And cigarette, a lot of cigarette left. 
Uh, so if okay. I'm a smoker, I would be happy, but I don't even smoke, so yeah, yeah that's fine. It's a waste. Uh. <laughs> so other than crazy stories, how about the uh, the event we had or you had? It was maybe what during the summer with the uh, Gosanga Orphanage? Mm. Uh, was I think was very much successful. I believe, like yeah. when I it was first, a very busy night. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And one guy even there was an auction. There was auction, Eric tennis, like a signed bet, signed glove, this kind of thing. And what I remember, I think it was a signed bet what Eric tennis used. And one guy purchased it over 3.3 million, one, something like this. And all the money go to the the Perfect. orphanage direct. So I think I can say... Yeah, this, this was with the NC Dinos and Eric Thames yeah. in particular who joined the event. Yeah, that's right. I'll put it on. Yeah, yeah. So I believe, I believe we will do a similar thing in December, like All a right. toy truck drive, like before Christmas. That's what we are planning so far. Cool. So going to like a post about it maybe after November, end of November. Okay. Yeah, going to like a collect the, some toy for the children. And would that be something to do with the NC Dinos as no, well? No, 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 or no, just no. something just, 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 off, just off between season us. Then, just right? between us. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Like, we, Thames, we, Thames decided to stay one more year here in Korea. Yeah. So I wish next year maybe we had another chance to do the similar things. Well, man, but he probably wouldn't be here in December, though. Uh, and it's off season. Yeah, right, right. I'll tell you what, like, I spoke to him briefly and, and he was loving it. Like, he mm. loved that event. He mm. was completely shocked, I think when he walked in with his entourage, the mm. security guys, uh-huh. and it was packed full of people. And, you know, they had to push through the crowd. And, and I think he was like, wow, I wasn't expecting this. Uh, yeah. Even me, like, usually my place off nine, but from 5 p.m., pe- there was a line, long line in front of bar. And people keep asking me, let them enter. Yeah. So I gave them a number. Okay, I right. guarantee you, you can enter later. Well, there was people coming from Seoul, right? Yeah, that's right. Many people messaged me. Even you got some messages. Yeah, it? even yeah, I got a message. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was because the number was on the bottom of the flyer, and somebody must have thought that I was, like, you know, organized. Yeah, some, some people organized. Yeah, right, but I wasn't. Would I you say that was your busiest night so far? In the, it was a business night. The like, busiest yeah. night? Yeah, probably it, I will not have busier day than that. It was, like, mm. busiest day ever. Yeah, right. Even out of bar, was packed with people. Yeah, in the bar, out of bar, even on the stair, downstair. Did you sell out of everything? Ah, <laughs> uh, you can see the photo. I don't. I didn't even have a, like a, my refrigerator was totally empty once Try. I finished the night. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty empty when I got there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So uh, yeah, it was definitely a busy night. Yeah. So uh, any other crazy stories? Without mentioning names, you're talking about somebody who got their uh, head like shaved. There was one guy. I just remind one guy. It's kind of fun story. There is one guy uh, used to live in Korea and always come bar and drink and pass at the bar. And whenever he come down bar, always come with Doug. With his and, dog. Yeah, with his yeah. dog. And <laughs> like kind of pity dog. But anyway, like that dog always working as a guided dog. So even he pissed out, like that dog lead him home. So he'd get passed out. And the dog would be like strapped. Yeah, yeah you know, that's right. Strapped that's right. to his arm yeah. or his leg. Yeah. Right? So between Korean in this town, he's kind of popular because every <laughs> people say the same thing. Oh yeah, look at that guy's dog. <laughs> yeah. Even our security, our building manager say the same thing. Really? Yeah, that dog's such a smart dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's hilarious, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it down. Yeah. He was a very good cook, right? He's a good cook. Yeah, he's a good yeah. cook. And, and he had long hair at one point. But later he just shaved all the shaved hair. Shaved it all off, yeah. right? You also had a, didn't you have like a tattoo event? Oh, yeah. On the yeah. head? No, you had a tattoo event. Ah, yeah, that's right. That's right. You it was tattoo last year. Artists? Yeah, at the beginning of last year, we did a like tart party. And was kind of successful. I, I believe maybe five, six people got free tat at the bar. So how how was that set up? Did the tattoo guys bring in like lights and things? Uh, they they prepare all the uh-huh. necessary stuff for giving the uh-huh. uh, ink job. Uh-huh. And also, they were my customer. They were my customer and they wanted to do the business with foreigner. Mm-hmm. So decide just to advertise themselves, like decide to give some free tats at the bar. Mm-hmm. And actually after this night, a lot of foreigner went there to get a tat. Right. So I, I think Good. for them it was kind of successful night. Also. So a lot of people got tattoos? Uh, at the bar that night, event night, five, six people. Like, really? Uh, Meridi, Meridi got 
some the first touch Aussie from Matt, yeah. Aussie Matt, Aussie he Matt. was on the podcast a little while ago, right? Yeah, he got a, he, he, he got, got one or two. Didn't yeah, he? he got a one free touch from that night. It was a beginning in that. That sounds like a bit of a dangerous situation to be getting a tattoo. <laughs> Especially when you're drunk, you can't ask right. him something on the I face. I think you're not supposed to be drunk when you get a tattoo. Did, didn't you guys... Most people are. You guys had some sort of rule or something, right? Like you, you couldn't be too drunk before you got the tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anything like I think that. if you're drunk, you bleed a lot. Well, what it is, is I believe that the alcohol thins your blood. Yeah. So the blood, if you get... Runs. Needle in you, it runs out more easily you know now, I'm not a very scientific guy but I think that that's what it is mm. <laughs> have you got any tattoos? I, 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 gave, I gave a lot of whiskey while they are getting tattoos oh, <laughs> yeah I gave a lot of whiskey I didn't know this <laughs> yeah. do you have any tattoos? no 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 no. Yeah. Uh, probably I'm not going to have I'm scared the needle the needle yeah yeah, I don't. I don't even have a pierce in my ear. It feels like a sunburn, actually. Is it's, it afterwards? It's, you anyway. have to. I don't. I what? For when I got tattoos, I don't remember feeling it at all. Okay. It depends where the tattoo is. Yeah. Like I've got one across the, the Japanese one, I my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. And it's when it when when it's close to a bone, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. you know the needle's like hitting against the bone, then okay. it really hurts. Okay. But and actually under like the armpit. Or like, be ticklish, you know, right? where the sensitive skin is or the mm-hmm. soft skin, that hurts. It hurt a but lot. like on the arm or something, it's not bad, right, Scott? No. Yeah, it's no big deal. So I think you should get a, a, a tattoo. <laughs> okay. Biscacci. I will think the, about yeah, it. Yeah. Biscacci, Biscacci tattooed across tattoo. your back. You know what Biscacci means? <laughs> yeah, bitch. <laughs> on my body. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be good, though. Uh, so uh, what are your future plans coming up? I know you mentioned to us, I believe it was off the podcast, but you'd like to move back to Vancouver? Oh, yeah, I wish, I wish. Like, you know, like, I, I got an international marriage, and I personally believe Korea is still not a great country to live as an international couple, and even as a, like, a mixed baby. So, uh, I don't know, I wanted to just move a better country, like a more, more multinational country than Korea. So, so right. you, you'd like your son to go to school from Canada? From yeah. Canada? Yeah, right. I can understand that. Right. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, putting a kid through school yeah, too in, much study, in study, Korea, study. Yeah, yeah. Too much competition and, and a lot of your study, study, yeah. and a lot of expense, you know, academies and That's things right. like That's that, right. right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's probably a, a good idea. Mm. Right. That's right. So you want to run the bar until your son is. 18 or 19 I don't even <laughs> have any plan my tomorrow dinner how can I know that <laughs> yeah. yeah but like I want to open one club in Canada oh yeah and my goal is stay in the gate and take entrance money yeah and two hours later three hours later go home that's what my kind, dream job what kind of club like that, like a dance club dance like club. a real dance club like open only on the weekend like a big one yeah big one that's oh. my goal I need a lot of money but yeah there's quite a few in Vancouver yeah uh-huh. Uh-huh. seems to be a popular thing there Huh. Right, it could be like a cover charge, you know, like an entrance fee. That that's yeah, yeah. how they make all their money in the clubs, usually, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. How much? Any idea how much it is to get into a club in Vancouver? Uh, I was in Vancouver last year, actually last summer, but I didn't go to any clubs, so I, I have used no to pay. Idea. It was eight uh, years ago. Probably right now it's more pricey, but I used to pay like twenty, thirty bucks. Just I would say it's around twenty dollars. I I don't see it being more than that. Yeah. In Canada, but so you're looking at about a, you know, fifteen thousand won. Fifteen thousand won. Fifteen to twenty thousand won. How about here? Like you mentioned before, that you you and James used to go to Newcastle. Yeah. Uh, right. Right. Do you have to pay to get in there? Usually we go room, so ah. we pay like two hundred fifty bucks, but include like unlimited beer and really? a bottle of whiskey. Wow. So it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Just the two of you? Yeah. And <laughs> they, they, they bring her. They bring her. Ah, they yeah. bring her all overnight. <laughs> that was the main reason why booking. we used to go there. Yeah. yeah. Booking time. Ah, yeah, right, booking yeah. time. You know, I've never been in there. You know why Korea only has a booking? <coughs> why is that? 
because you know what booking means like yeah, a waiter you, uh, you order the girl to come over and she can have a drink with yeah. you and spend a bit of time yeah, right? it's you order a girl but you're picking her out from they're, they're girls that are customers there you're not yeah, the waiter a, waiter bringer it's not a me. prostitute or it's something not a prostitute. it's another just another, just another girl it's 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 it's, an, it's kind of like a pickup yeah i, I like? believe uh korean we are too shy to go girl direct and right. ask them, oh, would you like to hang out? Would you like to drink together? This kind of thing. We are too shy to do it. So that's why we need to, someone help us. Right. Yeah. And I think as well, the difference in Korea, especially when you go to like a Korean style bar, is people sit on their own tables or they're, they're in their own area. Yeah, right, usually. right. But in like England or another country, everybody sort of stands up and kind of walks around. And it's sort of easier sometimes to, to approach you know, a girl or something if she's That's just true. kind of standing there, right? Yeah. Instead of walking over to the table and being like, hey. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I didn't put any table and chair at the bar. Right. Yeah, we have a very, like, a small amount of table and bar, uh, yeah. chair. <coughs> yeah, uh, it's good. Everybody stands yeah, around yeah. and mingles yeah. and things. So, uh, as a non-foreigner, obviously, as a Korean, what are your impressions of foreigners or the foreign community in Changwon? Oh, uh, I believe they are always very much energetic, act, like a, how do I say, active, energetic. Mm -hmm. And every single weekend they <coughs> plan to do something and go somewhere all together, party, camping, travel. I believe Korean is not that much active like foreigner. So sometimes I admire their, their way to life. Like they know right. how to like enjoy their own life here. Like right. as a teacher, <coughs> come Korea, work and work during weekday and we can always do some kind of different activity so i really envy them right have their this kind of life yeah i mean i think like part of that is because <coughs> they've traveled to a foreign country uh -huh. and you know they haven't done any you know they want to sightsee yeah, it's that, like that's right. the weekends yeah. like vacation time you know yeah they, they want to go around and do the sightseeing mm -hmm. or hiking or fishing or whatever right you know right so that's probably why foreigners <coughs> are more active I think I'm more active or was more active in Korea than I would be in England because everything seems pretty normal in mm -hmm, England and mm -hmm. kind of weekends you just chill out mm -hmm. right like Koreans would so you even know. Korea even foreigner here for, even foreigner here in Changwon they know better than me about yeah. Changwon yeah I don't even know where they go <laughs> but they always find somewhere new place and go so yeah. I, I, I check their Facebook and see where they went and I go there yeah oh yeah it looks cool let me go there <laughs> All right, Matt. So thanks for coming on the podcast. I thanks for inviting us to a final. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, Matt. Cheers. It was a pleasure, dude. I hope the podcast wasn't too uh, flummox. Flummoxing. For you. Uh, flummoxing. <laughs> I'm not drinking. But uh, yeah, anybody who's tuning in, please uh, pop on iTunes and leave us a review or a rating and really help us out. And thanks again, Matt. And we'll. You know, we're, we're out for this week. Tune in next week for our next podcast. Uh -huh. it was funny. I really like it. I really like it. <laughs> See ya. Thanks for tuning in to the Changwana Podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode.